fellow people, and welcome to Ten Acre Wood. We would love you to follow us down the rabbit hole this summer for a truly spectacular and original performance of a musical written by a local songsmith of Alice in Wonderland. We've actually called it Wonderland the Musical. How original is that? Undisnify yourself and bring your family down to Ten Acre Wood, Pomorne and near Weybridge to be part of our great new project. We'll be running auditions, rehearsals and workshops, not only in Ten Acre Wood, but throughout North Cornwall. Ten Acre Wood is beautiful and everybody will be invited out there. It is reclaimed ancient woodland where proprietor Jane Bailey has established a good balance between running a viable managed woodland business with low impact on the environment. Jane is the proprietor of Ten Acre Wood and this has been a labour of love for her over many years. When Jane first bought this pa patch of well, wilderness, ancient wilderness, it was covered in brambles. What was it like when you first got here? <clears throat> it was a complete jungle. I mean, um, you couldn't get through any of it without a machete in your hand. And it took years of sort of clearing and before we could sort of even start. To consider Is that why you're known as Jane of the Jungle? Yeah. I always <laughs> wondered. Jungle Jane, <laughs> yes. And, um, and so, and how many years to get to this point? Because you just won an award at the Cornwall Show, haven't you? I did. I came second prize um, in the Royal Forestry Competition um, in the restore, uh, Restored Woodland section. And, um, but I was, it took me a good six years of, you know, just clearing and... Chainsaws yeah. and bleeding hands and, and strimming and mowing, a lot of strimming and mowing. Um, and I op finally opened the forest school in 2012, but it's still an ongoing process. As we come through the gate, we envisage here the, the um, symbolic and the actual stepping through into our magical kingdom, stepping into Wonderland through a circular rabbit hole, which I picture, and Daniel, our designer, will tell you in a minute, um, will be made out of withy and living plants. And it'll be circular, so it is literally like stepping through a rabbit hole. Twisting and writhing, um, channeling people into, into the space. Um, all of this can be, it takes time. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes skill. Uh, and uh, in order to really show our appreciation and, and, and uh, to get the most out of skilled people, we need to pay them for their time. I was going to say, and it takes money. Yeah. And this is where you come in. You could really help us turn this into something spectacular. Um, and the audience will continue their journey into this wonderful roundhouse. We wish to cover the walls with fairground mirrors so that the audience has a distorted view of themselves as they partake of the little parcels hanging from the ceiling on silver ribbon. Eat me, drink me, get bigger, get smaller. We have a sound and lighting engineer, David Hudson, who has already arranged to, for LEDs to be spread at intervals along here. We're also running workshops, which we're lucky enough to have funding for so far, in um, witty lantern making and in illuminated mushrooms out of witty and tissue paper. What we certainly need some funding for, but it's an icing on the cake kind of scenario, is having the Cheshire Cat employing a trapeze artist and having the Cheshire Cat, and I have met somebody from Airfish Aerial, they're called, having um, the Cheshire Cat suspended on a trapeze from this tree, our very own Mama Birch tree, and she would be spectacularly lit up in a UV costume with a black light on her and will drop down in front of the audience and be saying a speech and doing a song. So this will be one of our dramatic installations. <laughs> In the Mad Hatter, at the Mad Hatter's tea party in the kitchen glen area. We would like to get a, a spectacular tent for this. As it is, we have gazebos. <laughs> they would probably serve in wet weather. But what ideally we'd like to have is some rather more ornate coverage. 
over the top of the tea party and we're really going to dress this area up so it looks truly magical and truly like something out of Wonderland. We're going to get trestle tables with, uh, with um, tablecloths and this matched china and lots of furniture and the audience will be invited to the bun fight that is the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. They'll be invited to throw buns at each other while drinking and eating out of mismatched crockery. Hi, my name's Laura Francis Martin. I'm working on the Alice in Wonderland project um, as a maker and as a singer. Um, I'm actually a, a, a theatre performer and a maker in real life. Um, so I've been asked uh, by the team to uh, come up with um, an inventive and colourful Jabberwocky costume, uh, which I won't give away the details of just yet, but it will be a very exciting costume. There's been various ideas for what to do with this bridge, but the very basics of it is that... Um, Due to the God of health and safety, we have to uh, make this absolutely foolproof. Uh, so it needs to be wider, there needs to be handrails. At the very least, as a the very bare minimum, we, we could put uh, spikes and uh, some poles into the ground here and tension them and bring a rope handrail across at the very bare minimum. But it would be nice to be able to get wheelchairs in. It would be nice to be able to include all people within this performance. And, and I think it's important to uh, give everybody that chance. As much as I love balancing on a, a log or a, or a, <laughs> uh, a narrow bridge, uh, which is all part of nature and, 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 and important as well, uh, we don't want any accidents. The audience will find themselves in the main performance area. We estimate this journey to take some half an hour through the various installations, in which time the audience will have a chance to take in the beautiful forest and all the installations around them, and perhaps to even grab, grab some refreshments in the kitchen as they come through and make their way to the main performance area. This is our main performance area, and Dan will describe to you how we exactly intend to lay it out. So due to being the beautiful British uh, weather, uh, we will need to uh, set up some sort of coverage. And uh, one of the plans is to uh, set up a wire that runs, that spans from up in the tree right over to this tree here. And over that wire, we can uh, make a, a tent-like structure out of canvas um, in order to uh, Protect the audience from the blazing sunshine that will be that will be uh, uh, getting them like like we have had recently. Um, the the main performance area will be here. We'll be setting up a stage um, where the irises are. Where the irises are, there will be it will be a covered stage, and so um, as we are so far in the uh, in the woods, we will need to to uh, access it. Backstage will need to come down from the road up here and down uh, cabling, electrics, generators, all of these things in order to uh, keep giving us volume. And uh, and this is indeed where the band will be set up. Because as the stage is running across here, the band will be set up to the side. And as Dan says, this whole area will be covered because of delightful weather. We're very lucky to have this easy access down the bank. But obviously, all the setting up takes time, takes money, um, and, logistics. and logistics, the actual logistics of getting everything down here. So envisage, <laughs> under the undergrowth, that this is a stage, there will also be a performance area it's right in front of this, and then all this area here will be the audience seated under the coverage, obviously, um, in, in kind of horseshoe shaped uh, rows of hay bales and um, when the audience arrive here, the main performance takes place. With the funding that we've already received, and this forest being so beautiful, we can put a very basic production on at the moment. And beautiful. And beautiful. Yeah. But not entirely the absolutely wonderful spectacular that we had been planning for. And it has taken us two years to basically get to this point. We just started discussing this in 2015. It's very much been a labour of love. And writing the songs has taken a year. 
So as you can see, it's something that's very important to us and to many other members of the community who have already volunteered their services for nothing. So your money would help turn this into something marvellous. And more importantly than that, if there's any aspects of production or singing or dancing and you're in the North Cornwall area, we would love you to join us. Please come and join in. Our audience, and that includes you, I think, I think uh, we want to welcome you and invite you to come and get involved in any way that you can whether you are in, wanting to be involved in, in helping us build these things which would be amazing manpower woman power these things are very important and very valuable uh, and we want people to come and see the show so please come and see the show please get involved every penny will help absolutely every penny will help so um, however you want to get involved uh, we will be we'll be so grateful Hi, I'm Annie and I'm going to be playing the part of Alice in the show, which I'm really excited to do. I heard about the project early on its stage and I really wanted to get involved and I feel really lucky that firstly I'm involved and secondly that I'm playing Alice, which is just really cool. Um, I'm really interested in this project for many reasons. Um, I studied university uh, at University Musical Theatre and I'm going to drama school in September. So to find opportunities for a young performer or a performer at all in this area is quite a task. Hi, my name's Morwenna G and I've been approached to work on the Project Wonderland mainly in the capacity as a choreographer but also as a vocal coach. My background initially is in dance. I trained at the University of Surrey, Roehampton, gaining a Bachelor of Arts in Dance with Drama and Theatre Studies. Uh, whilst I was there, I worked continually as a singer, um, often as a session singer, um, with bands, songwriters, um, particularly on the South West London music scene. 